nak? Awak yang tu lah. Jangan lupa subscribe channel kita. Tanda sokongan. Terima kasih. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Jom kita revise sambil berehat. Sambil berehat pun, kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengok handphone. Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula. Okey, sekarang kita akan masuk subtopik 2.2 berkenaan dengan charging and discharging of capacitors. Jadi kita akan tengok proses charging dan juga discharging. Alright. Jadi sebelum kita mula, kita nak revise semula apa itu time constant. Jadi dalam chapter ini kita akan jumpa time constant dengan simbol of tau and it is equal to RC. Jadi untuk kita kira time constant, dia bersamaan dengan RC dan unit time constant adalah seconds. Okay, so based on this equation, we can say that time constant is a product of resistance R and capacitance C. Dan apa sebenarnya time constant ni? Actually, time constant measure of how quickly the capacitor charges or discharges. Bila kita cerita berkenaan capacitor charges, means that we are referring to charging process. But for capacitor discharges, we are referring to discharging process. Jadi sekarang kita akan fokus terlebih dahulu berkenaan dengan charging process. Dan di sebelah kiri ini terdapat satu sekat di mana mengandungi switch kapasitor dan mempunyai plate A dan juga plate B. Resistor di sini dan juga V0 merupakan voltage supply to the circuit. Dan sebentar lagi kita akan lihat simbol ini berwarna pink merupakan elektron dan simbol yang ini berwarna hijau mewakili proton. Alright, so let's start. So initially, both plate A and B are neutral. Jadi dekat sini saya lukiskan bilangan elektron dan proton pada kedua-dua plate adalah sama dan mereka berpasangan untuk menunjukkan plate A dan plate B adalah neutral. And then what happen when switch S is closed means that we switch on the circuit So, the electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery and accumulate on the plate B of the capacitor. And what happen when the electrons accumulate at plate B, plate B akan ada extra electron and dia akan menolak electron pada plate A. Jadi apa berlaku bila elektron pada plate B menolak elektron at plate A? So these electrons will flow into the positive terminal of the battery to resistor R as shown in the figure and finally leaving only positive charges on the plate A. Alright? Jadi kita nampak dekat sini plate A akan jadi more positif dan plate B akan jadi more negatif. Jadi akhirnya semua charge positif will accumulate at plate A and all negative charges will accumulate at plate B. Okay, jadi kalau kita lukis semula, kita mungkin boleh bayangkanlah seperti ini. So, the top plate we label as positive Q means all the positive charges at plate A and the bottom plate we label as negative Q means all electrons accumulate at plate B. Alright, so now look at the last point. As charges accumulate on the capacitor, we can say that Vc, which is the voltage across capacitor, will increase. Asalnya tadi, capacitor kita adalah neutral. Vc is equal to zero and no charges. And what happen when all the charges accumulate on the capacitor? So, Vc will increase. Dan bila voltage across capacitor semakin meningkat, what happen to the current? The current will reduce slowly until the value of Vc equal to V0. 
So when the voltage across capacitor equal to the voltage supplied by the battery, we can say that the voltage across capacitor is maximum. Bila voltage across capacitor maximum, which is equal to the voltage supplied by the battery, current flow in the circuit will equal to zero. Jadi macam mana? Boleh faham ke? Apa? Masih confuse lagi? Okey, jom kita tengok short notes di sini. Okey, point yang pertama, initially when current starts to flow, that's mean current is maximum, I not. Okay, ini adalah pada permulaan proses where charge in capacitor equal to zero, Q is equal to zero and pada mulanya juga voltage across capacitor VC is also equal to zero. Alright, pada awalnya current flow in the circuit would be maximum which is I not, Q equal to zero, VC is equal to zero. Dan point yang kedua, when the current starts to flow and the potential difference across capacitor starts to increase. Jadi, bila current dah mula mengalir dalam circuit tersebut, potential difference across capacitor iaitu VC akan mula bertambah dan semakin bertambah. Okay? Dan dalam masa yang sama, charge yang terkumpul pada kapasitor juga semakin bertambah. Tetapi current flow in the circuit akan semakin berkurang disebabkan voltage across capacitor semakin bertambah. Okay, sampai satu masa, point yang ketiga, when capacitor is fully charged, no current flow. Apabila capacitor telah penuh iaitu Q is maximum, current flow in the circuit will equal to zero and at this time please remember that the voltage across capacitor is equal to the supply voltage which is V0. Okay, jadi ini adalah tiga perkara penting yang berlaku dalam proses charging. Sekarang kita akan beralih pula kepada graph Q against T. So you can see here at T is equal to zero, the charge in the capacitor is equal to zero. And what happened? As T is increasing, the charge in the capacitor will increase slowly until its maximum value of charge Q0 where Q0 also can be calculated by using equation Q0 equal to C V0. And based on this graph, we must remember equation to calculate charge as a function of time Q equal to Q0 bracket 1 minus E negative T over RC. Okay, as shown in the figure. Alright, so let's move to the second graph, which is the graph of V against T. So you can see here, at T is equal to zero, the voltage across the capacitor is also equal to zero. Dan sampai satu masa, voltage across capacitor reach maximum value, which is equal to supplied voltage V0 as shown in the figure. Okay, dan macam biasa, di sini kita ada equation V is equal to V0 bracket 1 minus E negative T over RC. So, this is for the charging process. Alright, so now let's move to the third graph which is graph for current against time. Alright, so daripada sini kita boleh nampak at T is equal to 0 pada permulaan proses. I is maximum which is I not. Okay, jadi bila masa bertambah, apa berlaku pada current yang maksimum tadi, dia akan semakin berkurang. Okay, so dalam masa yang sama, charge bertambah, voltage across capacitor pun bertambah, tetapi current that flow in the circuit akan berkurang. Dan sampai satu masa, current in the circuit will reach zero when the capacitor is fully charged. Okay, so this is the equation of current in terms of T. I equal to I naught E negative T over RC. Jadi sekarang kita akan fokus pada graf ini di mana di dalam graf ini kita nampak ada 
tau equal to RC dan daripada graf ini kita boleh dapatkan value of time constant tau equal to RC where time constant in this case can be defined as the time required for the capacitor to reach 63% of its maximum charge Q0. Secara mudahnya apabila charge dalam kapasitor itu semakin bertambah dan dia bertambah dan bertambah sehinggalah 63% of its maximum charge dia masih belum penuh ya. Okay, pada 63% of its maximum charge, kita boleh katakan masa ketika itu merupakan time constant. Boleh? Dan untuk voltage across capacitor pun sama juga. At time constant tau equal to RC, it is actually the time required for the capacitor to reach 63% of its maximum voltage maknanya dia belum sampai lagi 100% of maximum voltage means that voltage across capacitor tadi akan bertambah sedikit demi sedikit sehingga satu masa where at T equal to time constant the voltage across capacitor is 63% of its maximum voltage okay dan bagaimana pula untuk graph current against time at T is equal to time constant here it is actually the time required for the current across the resistor to decrease to 37% of its initial current ingat ya at T is equal to 0 second current is maximum which is equal to I0 dan bila charge semakin bertambah current pun akan berkurang sampai satu masa at T is equal to RC which is time constant okay, nilai current yang tinggal adalah 37% of its initial current boleh? dan sebelum saya terlupa Okay, bagaimana untuk kita kira maximum current I0, kita boleh kira by using this equation. This is very important because somehow we need to calculate the maximum current I0 at T is equal to 0 second where I0 is equal to V0 over R. Okay, macam mana boleh faham ke charging proses? Sekarang kita akan bergerak untuk discuss berkenaan dengan discharging proses pula. Okay, dan ini merupakan circuit kita tadi kan. Kita ada capacitor with plate A and B and during discharging process, a battery is disconnected. Remember, okay? So, kita akan buang bateri dekat sini. So, this is the circuit for discharging process. Dan kita recall balik. Initially, when the capacitor is fully charged, plate A akan jadi positively charged and plate B akan jadi negatively charged. Alright? So, when discharging process started, so we can see here that electrons from plate B begin to flow through the resistor and neutralizes positive charges at plate A. So, proses ini akan berulang sampailah charge in the capacitor is equal to zero. Boleh? Jadi, bila kita katakan pada awalnya sebelum proses discharging bermula, the capacitor is fully charged. Means that the potential difference across capacitor is maximum which is equal to V0. And V0 is the supply voltage tadi. Okay? Jadi, when part of the positive charges on plate A is neutralized by the electron from plate B, tadi kita dah nampak electron bergerak daripada plate B pergi ke plate A and what happened to the voltage across capacitor? The voltage across capacitor is reduced. Okay, so charge akan berkurang, Q decreasing, Vc also decreasing. And this process will continues until the current through the resistor is equal to zero. Jadi, bila current is equal to zero, means that all the charges at plate A is fully neutralized 
and the voltage across the capacitor becomes zero. Vc is equal to zero. Jadi dalam proses ini, bila elektron daripada plate B bergerak pergi ke plate A, plate A akan mula neutralize sampai satu masa semua charge dekat plate A is fully neutralized. Q is decreasing and voltage across capacitor slowly decreasing until zero. Okay, sekarang kita akan tengok pula the pattern of the graph Q against T for discharging process. So, here we can see at T is equal to 0 second. Pada permulaan proses discharging, Q is equal to Q0 which is maximum charge. Remember, to calculate maximum charge of the capacitor is equal to Q0 equal to CV0. Jadi, ini adalah equation of charge for discharging process. So, pastikan jangan tertukar dengan equation untuk charging process ya. Yeah? Okay. So, here we have time constant tau equal to RC and from this graph, time constant for discharging process is actually the time required for the charge on the capacitor to decrease to 37% of its maximum charge Q0. Okay, sebelum charge itu mencapai value kosong at T is equal to RC which is time constant means that charge yang tinggal dalam kapasitor itu hanyalah 0.37 Q0. Okay, dan ini pula tambahan untuk awak tahulah berkenaan dengan graph voltage across kapasitor against T sama juga as we have discussed before that the voltage across capacitor tadi dia maximum because fully charged and slowly the voltage across capacitor akan berkurang sampai satu masa Vc is equal to zero. Okay, jadi berdasarkan graf ini kita ada time constant is equal to Rc and time constant is actually the time required for the voltage across the capacitor to decrease to 37% of its maximum voltage V0. Okay, jadi sebelum dia sampai kosong, pada kosong perpuluhan 37 V0 means that itu merupakan time constant. Okay, dan graf yang terakhir sekali semestinya graf I against T sama juga I daripada maximum I0 and finally I will decrease and at 0.37 I0 and at T is equal to RC. Ini sebenarnya time required for the current across the resistor to decrease to 37% of its maximum voltage. Okay, jadi perlu ingatlah equation untuk current. So here we have I equal to negative I0 E negative T over RC. Jadi kita boleh gunakan kesemua equation tadi untuk kita kira nilai current ataupun nilai charge yang tinggal dalam kapasitor tersebut berdasarkan masa yang diberikan. Okay, so kita perlu buat soalan baru kita boleh faham. Alright, itu saja untuk video kali ini. Jangan lupa like and share dan kita akan jumpa lagi dalam next video. Assalamualaikum. Selamat sejahtera. Bye-bye.